It's finally here. Tesla has been rolling out the much-awaited version 9 update to all Tesla vehicles, and with it, it brings a little something for everybody. The one thing that all vehicles are getting is the user interface update. Gone are the iOS 4-esque buttons and icons of yesteryear, and with it bringing, <laughs> you guessed it, modern iOS style buttons. I definitely don't mind the new interface, and I also like some of the changes that they've made where the cool air circulation and maximum temperature defroster now don't require a super secret double tap. Although, for every cool choice like this, there's some really bizarre ones, such as the inconsistencies between some of the icons, like the phone, which is a modern phone here, and the phone on the call menu, which is an old style phone. I also can't unsee the three different shades of green on my binnacle display. A winter green-ish battery, a really bright green turn signal, and if you have the energy meter pulled up, a very dark and bright green there in the energy meter as well. It's a very bizarre choice. As far as some of the things that we were all used to before in our vehicles, now navigation is ever present in the background and you can have one app open on the bottom. I did find that, although I don't mind most things on the bottom, the camera is not one of the things I like down there. Putting it in reverse while the camera's open does pull up the guidelines, but it's still a very weird thing to look down there when you're not used to it. I did find a workaround though, if you close the camera out and then put your vehicle in reverse while just the navigation is up, you'll get the old style camera on top and sort of bird's eye view of the vehicle above you with the ultrasonic showing your proximity to different objects on the bottom. Hitting the camera button, however, will cancel this out and take you back to the new style view. A lot of the old style shortcut tricks like sliding the navigation bar to go to home or work are still present in the new version, along with some other nifty little sh new shortcuts such as pulling up on the audio player to access your connected phones or to reconnect a phone via Bluetooth. You can also scrunch down any of the bottom windows to sort of minimize them to give you just basic controls and then slide down again to close the window entirely. The one thing that I do find odd, however, is that now that navigation is open in the background and has a potential to be full screen, it doesn't really utilize that entire screen space. For instance, all of your directions show up in a list while the navigation is zoomed out, but the moment that it zooms in, it compresses it up to a tiny window up in the left. There is a new settings icon, which is a shortcut to a lot of your navigation settings, which I really like as you no longer have to dig through menus to access a lot of this useful stuff. Although, as I was saying before, when you do expand the directions window, it will zoom you back out to the full trip and not bring you up to a closer view unless that window is collapsed. Find that a little odd, but it might be something that's changed in a future update. Speaking of odd design choices, a lot of the icons down on the bottom bar have a menu except where I would expect there to be one, such as the seat heaters. They just simply turn the front passenger and driver's seat heaters on. To access the actual entire vehicle, you have to open up the temperature settings and then click the little heat icon. And that's where you'll find the heat controls for all of the seats, plus the steering wheel and the defroster. So let's talk autopilot, specifically autopilot one. There have been a ton of Autopilot 2 videos out there, but I haven't seen a whole lot on what it's done for Autopilot 1. It seems to behave on crests of hills and curves the same, however it does seem to have a little bit more intelligent navigating, as whenever a turn is coming up and the lane splits, Autopilot thus far has taken me into the correct lane, that I would need to be in to make the turn. There's definitely going to have to be a lot more testing on this, but so far that seems to be the case. And if you haven't received an update in a while, you'll be happy to know that you can now cancel the famous autopilot nag by using the scroll wheels 
or the previous and next song buttons on the steering wheel instead of just having the apply slight force or torque to the steering wheel. So there you have it. Just a quick look at the version 9 update on Autopilot 1 era vehicles. I'm now recording a bunch of Autopilot miles with the new update to see if there truly is any improvement or Hardware 1 has reached the end of its useful life and we're now making way for Hardware 2 and full self-driving vehicle updates. Only time will tell, but in the meantime I'll be making more Autopilot 1 vs Autopilot 2 videos especially with this version 9 update where it's using more cameras so we can really see the differences and how the old hardware is comparing to the new hardware progression. And if hardware 1 is actually getting any better at all or if we're kinda stuck where we're at. But in the meantime, enjoy and have fun with the new update to your vehicle. And as always, thanks for watching.